Hello and welcome back to episode three, She Sparks Live, women leaving their mark and sharing their spark. Today we have a very exciting guest, Adele Park. Hello, Adele. She is an Audi, Audi, you were a what? I have won an Audi award for original work um, for a product called Jitters, a quirky little audio book. I love that. An Audi Award winner. That's fantastic. And thank you for being on our third episode. We're super excited. So the episode today is going to be about learning the ropes of our audiobooks and the importance of that from start to end. But the first question I'm going to ask you, Adele, is since tomorrow is the first day of spring, which is exciting, if you had to live in one season for the rest of your life, what season would that be and why? I would probably choose autumn because I love the colors and I love the food and I love the gatherings. But spring is of course my second favorite season because I love all of the trees and I love to get out after it's been cold. And there's so much to do around the St. George area in terms of hiking and biking. It's just a really wonderful time of year. I love it and I love seeing all the flowers coming out and I do like autumn as well. I think that would be one of my favorite because it's not too hot. It's not too cold, but then you get to see all of the orange leaves, and which is super exciting. So to s begin our episode three, I would like to ask you, Adele, what do you do? What's your passion? So these listeners can know a little bit more about what you do and kind of the topic we're going to be really into for this episode. I have an indie recording studio here in St. George called Straight to Audio Productions. And I make multi-voiced audiobooks, which I then sell on Amazon and Audible.com. Wonderful. And I actually had the opportunity to come in and experience your studio and see all of the back end of what you do. And that's so amazing. You definitely have to be, it's something I couldn't do, but you have to be full of knowledge and know exactly, you know, how to set things up and how to make things sound good. And it was an amazing experience for me to come and see what you do. I well, thank that. you. I was happy to have you in the <laughs> studio. You came in, did an audition, and that's what we do at Straight to Audio Productions. We try to hire locally if we can. Um, for some projects, we do hire outside the area, but we always host auditions, and we do pay our actors. Yeah, I love that. That's wonderful. So we're going to kind of dive into the topic because I feel like there's so much education to learn about audiobooks, getting it produced, where to begin, where to end. And so the first question is, how can authors turn their books into audiobooks? I always tell people the first step should be going to ACX. Even if you don't end up going through ACX, that is a great place to learn all about audiobooks. Now, ACX stands for Audiobook Creation Exchange. ACX is affiliated with Audible.com, which is a subsidiary of Amazon.com. If you are making an audiobook or trying to sell one, you want to be with Audible and Amazon for sure, amongst other sites that you want to sell with as well. But those are some top sites for books and audiobooks. Now, ACX is kind of a marketplace for writers, for narrators, and for studios. So if you're a narrator, you can go to ACX and post your audition or your demo reel. So studios like mine can go there and listen to a sample of your work. I have hired some actors that I found on ACX when I can't find someone locally. If you're a writer and you want someone to produce your audiobook, you can go to ACX and you can find a studio or just a narrator who has a studio to produce your audiobook. Mm -hmm. I actually jumped on that website when we first met and I thought it was pretty cool that they have all of the actors already there. So if you don't want to do the voice of your own audiobook, you can um, find a source to that. So what's your recommendations on when people do want to do audiobook? Is it more likely that they do it as their own voice um, and do it record it as themselves? Or do you prefer for people to actually hire actors and professionals who do this for a living? Well, I think it depends on what kind of book you have. Ah. Now, let's say you've written a nonfiction and you're an expert in your field. That could really lend a lot of credibility to your audiobook if you are the one doing the voicing. Mm. But let's say that you have written a novel that involves several complicated characters and you're not really an actor, then you might want to consider hiring an actor. Another issue that you should definitely consider is 
are you going to have a single voice narrate your book or is it going to be multi-voice? Oh, okay. When you add voices, you add uh, production costs, you add time, but you also add depth to your audiobook. Yeah, wow, that's very fascinating because I, you know, I'm creating a book and I know a lot of our listeners have created a book or want to create a book and it's the next step is, again, how do we bypass getting it published or where do we go, where do we find a voice? And so that is, again, acx.com. So just look it up, and it will give you the sources you need. For our next question, I would love to know, what are some things that authors should consider when turning the script of their audiobook or their written book into an audiobook? What, what should be considered when turning that, that transition? Getting back to who's going to narrate, um, mm -hmm. if you're going to have multi-voice narration, you need to prepare your script in such a way that it's easy to produce that. So, for example, um, if you're going to have multiple characters and they are talking to each other, that makes for a more complicated process. Yeah. And so do you have all the actors in the studio at once and you read it all at once where the actors have dialogue with each other? Or um, are you going to do something like I did? I turned my scripts into first-person narrations. So each character comes on and gives you their version of the story and then the next character comes on and so I only record my actors one at a time so you know that's one of the things that you need to keep in mind is is it going to be multi-voiced is it going to be single narration if it is multi-voiced and you do have multiple actors coming in who's going to read those lines in between the dialogue mm. so that's where it can get really complicated um, and really sticky really I love that. So we're going to kind of jump back um, to, to you and not so much your knowledge. Again, you, you told us a little bit about what started your journey, but what are some challenges that you had to overcome and what, again, what sparked your, your struggles and just you thriving to where you're at now? I think one of my biggest challenges is this tendency to want to hold on to a certain idea about how I'm supposed to promote these audiobooks and then if that doesn't work um, you know sort of an inflexibility in terms of uh, changing up and trying something else I've become a little bit better about that so I don't insist on certain things such as oh I've got to have a viral video oh I've got to have a podcast that's the top rated podcast I think it's better to ca cast your net widely and like see what that. you can reel in in terms of success because I don't think there's one single pathway to you know getting good sales for audiobooks I think you have to kind of get in there and explore and that's what's so lovely about social media because you mm -hmm. have all of mm -hmm. these options and most of them are free yeah is there other audio channels out there other than audible or is that kind of just the main source so if I'm people also, wanted to expand out of Audible or have other channels other than a podcast, are there other Audible places to go and purchase those books? Absolutely. I'm selling some of my products uh, through Blackstone Audio, which has its own MP3 download Blackstone, site. Blackstone, okay. Um, of course, Barnes & Noble has uh, an MP3 download oh, site. I didn't know I that. am no longer offering mine um, through uh, um, Barnes, and Noble. Barnes & Noble because I had an agent at the time that had placed me there. And then when uh, I decided I would make more money going just handling all the business end on my own, I kind of lost my seat at Barnes and Noble, and I've never, frankly, reapplied. Um, you do have to have a minimum of three titles in order to get on Barnes and Noble. So I had only so had like three different books, audio yes, books, yeah, three oh, different titles. So okay. I, at the time that I uh, decided to go on my own, I only had two titles, so I really wasn't eligible. And then when it ended up that um, I decided to handle handle the business end on my own. I really figured that it's just easiest to go with Amazon and Audible for me personally. Yeah. The other service I use though is called Findaway. Now what Findaway does is they sell digital downloads to libraries, which is a great ah, place to be. Go. And that's all they do is sell to libraries. And so um, I, I'm also offered on Findaway. So I'm on Findaway and I'm on Audible and Amazon and then I have a couple of titles on Blackstone. So there are more platforms out there. But I would say the majority of audiobook listeners are probably going to find your product on Audible. Well, and one thing that you shared with me that helped me tremendously is 
if you want to be on Audible and have a book on there, it's connected with Amazon. So you have to have an actual product, whether it's a book or a CD or something to sell through Amazon first in order to be put on Audible. Is that correct? That is correct. So for me, because my products are in audio format only, I had to make a physical disc to sell on Amazon in order to be eligible to sell on audible.com. Awesome. And so if you have a disc, a disc, other people have books, what are some issues that factor like the cost of getting a book produced or a CD or just to get our, our words out there? What are the, the cost of that? One of the things you can do is you can go on ACX and you can actually barter the cost. So oh, there are right. some options. There are some narrators who are willing to produce your audiobook for a portion of the sales. So let's say that you have no budget or a very small budget. That might be a great option for you. Okay. Um, also, you can say, you can post a job and say, I'm paying X amount of money for this particular job and then allow actors to audition for it. So you can keep the cost down in certain ways. But of course, you kind of do get what you pay for. So be careful about you what you're what doing you on Audible. <laughs> we hear that all the time, right? I love it. And then what are some ways authors can promote their books through audiobooks? So if they have their book on Audible or if they have it on the other sources that you talked about, that's great to at least take that leap and get it out there. So once it's out there, you're, you're an Audi Award winner, narrator, producer, and... Um, just all of the other stuff. So how do you get people to now purchase and buy and how do you promote that? Well, it's funny that we're coming full circle on the Audi Award because it's not that I'm hooked on awards, but when you enter contests, you get top industry officials to listen to your product. They might not otherwise listen to it. So that's why that's important to me. And then, of course, the other thing is take advantage of all those freebies. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, do a blog. Uh, start a show. Start a show. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great that you can try all these things. And if they don't work because you haven't invested a lot of money, maybe a lot of time, but not a lot of money, um, you can afford to fail. So that's the fun part of the adventure is that you can get out there and if you're producing your own audiobook, you aren't beholden to a publisher. So you can write your own story in terms of marketing. I love that. And what's your favorite thing about what you do? Because you're, again, you're straight to audio productions. You, you skip the, the, per, um, the writing piece and you just go to audio. So what's been your most favorite thing about that, about what you do in your profession? Well, I just got to brag about my cast right now because I get to work with people I genuinely love. And I've been really fortunate. I do host auditions, but I seem to be able to hire people that are not only great actors, but they're great people to work with. And so my job is fun. I feel like I have the greatest radio station in the world, only I have actors instead of DJs. I love that. And you actually, so, um, and I can't believe it's coming up now, so Adele, this show started, the She Sparks Live stove, it started because of you. I met you the, at the Ignite Your, the women's conference like last month or something and we met and then you came to She Sparks and I was able to come see your show and I just, I love that we, you have a podcast now that you started, right? And I will give you credit for starting the podcast. We helped each other <laughs> It was out. like a little, you nudged yes. me and I nudged you. So I have a, a podcast now called Quirky Cat Nips, and it's all this quirky, crazy stuff about cats. I and love it. at the end of my podcast, I put a little ad on for Splat, a quirky cat audiobook, which is the audiobook I'm currently promoting. So I'm having fun doing a podcast, and I'm also promoting my books. I and so it. that's what I'm saying. You can write your own story with the marketing now. It's really great. The technology, I can't say enough about it. I love it. And a way to think and help each other out because you just have to do it, right? You just have to keep each other accountable and just thrive. and in your own world. So is there any other education you would like to share with the viewers on learning the ropes of audiobooks or production or any other education you would like to share? Well, I would just encourage people to take a little bit of time and 
learn about audiobooks before you jump into it. Find a path that's economically feasible for you. Um, maybe you want to record it in your own community, and if that's the case, then find a studio like mine where you can record it for you know a reasonable price. So uh, check around. You don't have to go with the first thing you see. I would advise checking into lots of different options mm -hmm. and finding the one, customize it for your book and your personal needs. I love that. So again, just to, to wrap it up, you said if anyone has a book that they created or want to create a book, they should check the, web, the website ACX, um, which is a good source to begin. Now, if there's people out there who want to be known more as an audio voice recorder or the people, our other target audience, or the people who might want to be the voice for other people's books, do you have any sources for those viewers to go and apply or how to be on ACX or do you know any of that type of well, I know that you can post a demo reel on ACS for free. So of you, you doing a yes. voice. Okay. And so then other studios such as mine, when I'm looking for a voice, um, you, you can narrow your search. I want a female. I want one that's between 20 and 30. You know, you can set up a demo of or, or a, a, a profile of the type of actor you're looking for. And so, of course, when you put your demo reel up, you want to make it... Um, appeal to as many people as possible. So your demo reel should maybe uh, reflect all the different kinds of voices you can do. Say you can do a funny voice and a sexy voice and a serious voice and a I'm really going to sell you voice. Make sure all that's on your demo reel. Don't have it be too long because nobody's going to listen more than you know 90 seconds yeah. to your demo reel. So okay. hit them fast and hard with it. Okay. And then um, I had another question. So when, what do you look for when you're bringing actors in to help you do your books and your voices? I know you do your voice for a lot of it, but you also outsource it. So what do you look for as an, you know, a producer? What, what skills catches your interest? One of the things that I'm just really a stickler about is enunciation. So I like actors that make it easy to understand what they're saying. Okay. Um, so no mush mouth. Um, the other things that I look for is um, the quality of your audio waves. So if you have a real um, reedy voice, unless I'm looking for an, you know, uh, I'm trying to cast for a character that has that kind of voice. Typically, I just like a nice, solid voice because it makes it easier for me to edit it. So when you get, go in for an audition, by the way, speak from your gut and give it everything that you have. Really um, use your diaphragm and use your full voice. Don't speak at the top part of your voice. Speak from your gut and, and be full. That doesn't mean get in there and yell during your interview or your audition, but but uh, don't be mousy about it either because when you're yeah. doing an audio book, yeah. the only way we're telling the story is through audio. Unlike TV where people can get part of the message just by looking at you, when you're doing an audio, it has to be your voice only. So make your voice really count. And I can totally uh, back that because when I came on to audition you know, at your studio, I, it felt like I was behind a camera, but in reality I wasn't. So the advice for me for those who want to be a voice or want to you know apply or anything like that just be yourself and if you have the script then just practice just practice because i think my mistake of when i went into you um i felt pretty good walking out your doors but i should have practiced and i think that would have definitely helped my audition and you know and so just a absolutely yeah the more prepared you can be the better off you are yeah so we're gonna end episode three. I would like to know your testimony um, of the women's world and women's empowerment. Like I said, I met you at a women's conference. You did come to a She Sparks event. So what did you think of She Sparks business and just women's empowerment as a whole? Well, I am all for women helping women. We all need to lift each other up. But you in particular, I saw you on stage at the women's conference and you had so much energy and you connected with the people there oh, and you. I felt like you had a strong message and I just reached out to you because you're really hard to resist and I know we're going to see you on <laughs> a national that? stage. <laughs> uh, you, you, have, oh, thank you. you have that spark that uh, comes with She Sparks. I appreciate so, that. Um, and you seem to be very gracious about helping other women get their message out including me so thank you yeah. very well, much. Women, women need women and women get, in, get women and women inspire women.
win. And when we all get on the same page, we can all lift each other up and just thrive together, which is the most important part. So it, for our listeners, if they want to reach out to you or do work with you or just learn more about your straight to audio productions, where can they find you or what contact info would you like to provide for them? I have a website, www.quirkyaudiobooks.com, and they can connect with me through there. I have an email option there, and they can learn about the audiobooks that I'm doing uh, and perfect. see if that is something they, they would even like to be involved with. Um, not all projects are for all actors, and so that's a good way to kind of try before you buy. Okay, perfect. And they can see your products on there, too. And, and there are wonderful. links for Audible and Amazon. and Yeah, or wonderful. they can hit me up on Facebook. All right. Well, listeners, again, Adele Park. This is She Sparks Live, women sharing their mark and sharing their spark. This is the episode on learning the ropes of audiobooks. Thanks for listening. If you saw something that catched your interest, please share. We would love to spread this education to the world. Tune in next time. She Sparks Live.